I believe in God, dot, 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 no space. Here's why you should too, exclamation point. From Matt Powell, official, all caps, because sure. Okay, Matt Powell, all caps, official, what you got? God exists. Starting strong, I see. Just assert this as true. Hi, my name is Scarlett, and I'm an atheist and skeptic. It's late summer, and I've just come back from a little trip to Detroit, so I'm feeling lazy, like I need some low-hanging fruit. Matt Powell is among the lowest of the low-hanging fruit. Willfully ignorant, just plain dumb, and very grifty. Trying to get some of that sweet Kent Hovind audience. As I said today, we're looking at a video called I Believe in God, Here's Why You Should Too. I thought I'd put together a little bingo card. Let's see how much of this we can fill. We can already put a chip in the middle square. Well, that's my blibbity blab. Let's see what gems Matt Powell has for us in this video. If God does not exist, that would mean that everything that you see in the world appeared from nothing, from magic, that mysticism would have to be true. LOL, it's either God or the world created itself. Do I even need to say anything about this false dichotomy? Or that we don't believe that everything came from nothing? That the universe and then our galaxy and solar system and eventually our world formed from existing energy and material? That Matt Powell is so caught up in the Genesis stuff he can't really understand what science teaches. What does Matt Powell think magic and mysticism are? I looked up definitions of both in a couple of dictionaries. Magic is always about some kind of supernatural power over natural forces. It is the breaking of physical laws. But when we are positing natural processes only, this does not make any sense whatsoever. The closest I can see to a definition that works is the use of magic as wonderful or exciting, used informally like, the evening was magic, as in it was fabulous and everything went to plan. Mysticism is even worse because definition one is a union with the deity, and that's kind of hard if you are not positing a deity. At best, Merriam-Webster has a definition about baseless speculation, but if you have evidence, it is not baseless. One of the things I'm consistently amazed about is Matt Powell's projection. The Bible tells of a God making everything from nothing and fashioning a mud man that he breathes life into, yeah, but science is the magic one, right? I mean, Christianity is all about some union with the deity in the afterlife. And in this life, it's about God breaking whatever physical laws he wants to. But really what I think is going on is that Matt has heard some people say religion is a bunch of fairy tales. And he's pulled the classic schoolyard trick of nuh -uh, you. Anyway, here's what we've got filled on the bingo card. Yet, supposedly, we're supposed to believe... Supposedly, we're supposed to. Good scripting. That atheists believe in science, and secular humanism is all about promoting science. But yet, when it comes down to the basic fundamental of science, of time, space, and nature's origins, they will buy into the biggest lie that anyone could ever buy into on it. That time, space, and nature appeared from nothing? That time, space, and nature poofed into existence from an explosion? Poof! So, science is not a lie, even if it doesn't explain everything yet. Science seeks a model of how the natural world works. And no one who understands the Big Bang says it was an explosion. It was an expansion of a singularity. It did not poof, Matt Powell. Again, Matt is projecting his book onto whatever his, um, I want to say understanding is. But we know Matt doesn't understand science, so he's projecting his religion onto this exposition of bullshit. Yeah, that's it. Also, here's where we're at on the bingo card. I'm counting atheism equals humanism, even though he doesn't say exactly that. He's not exactly differentiating, you know? Magic is what it is. It is a magic act that they believe in. They think that because there's no God, that everything came about by a natural process. That is magic. That is mysticism. I have to laugh here. Matt gets one thing right, that everything came about through a natural process. That is correct. Hooray, Matt Powell. Hooray! 
but then he claims that it is mysticism and magic. Now, Matt Powell is the truly mystified one, and there ain't no correcting that. As we read, both of those words rely on some kind of supernatural or divine. None of this spew about atheism does anything to explain why I should believe in Matt Powell's God, though. I don't think there's progress on our bingo card because this was repetition. Mysticism. If they want to believe that, that's fine. But they shouldn't be allowed to push it on little kids and to bully people into thinking that God is somehow not a plausible explanation. Isn't it nice that Matt Powell thinks it's fine for us to believe the things that are actively demonstrable? Adorable. I should have added, won't someone think of the children to my bingo card? Ugh, oh, next time. But I am counting victim status here on that account. But real question, is it bullying to put together a textbook and publish articles about how the world works? Do we need to say that there are plenty of theists who accept the discoveries of science? They just think their god is behind the natural processes. Matt Powell is not in the majority on this one. When in fact God is actually the only explanation for our origins. God is not evidenced by Matt Powell himself when he said there were natural processes that science can explain. Even if you want to think said natural processes were magic, and I don't, you would have to say that God, who can supposedly break the laws of physics, is definitely magic. If it were science, it would be discoverable, and we wouldn't have apologists yapping on about leaps of faith because we would have a mathematical formula or something. And God is the only hope that we have on this earth for eternal life and for the future of our existence as a population. Yeah. What does it mean that God is the only hope for our future as a population? What is that about? I get the eternal life part, but the rest? Eh. Anyway, as the kids say, citation needed on the afterlife. By the way, totally counting atheism is hopeless on my bingo card. And God really is the foundation of our country of America. The founding fathers, when they were founding our nation, they said that God would be our Lord, and that it would be one nation under God. So no, the founders of the U.S. didn't do or say any such thing. That one nation under God bit didn't come about till the Cold War. And none of this has anything to do with why I should believe in God, which I want to remind everyone is why we're here. I could link out to shit, but Matt Powell is not worth us taking screen caps and going back over well-trod paths. Also, I didn't have Christian nationalism on the bingo card. Damn it. It's important to tell people that we didn't appear here from nothing. We didn't appear here from chaos and from randomness. I do appreciate long pauses in the videos. Thank you, Matt. It makes my job easy to butt in and say why you're wrong. So now we're back to the origins of everything and not the founding of the U.S. My, we are jumping around and to think that the universe formed from a singularity does not mean it was random. Note to self, add random and chaos on the bingo card. We were intelligently designed. So you're just going to say this. I could give a million reasons how we are stupidly designed, or other creatures are stupidly designed. But we all know this shake, right? Anyway, Matt won't say how he knows this. He'll be off to another topic. But hey, we do have another bingo square. Jesus loves us. Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago. Jesus died for us. He gave up his own life so that we could have eternal life with him in heaven someday. Oh, random preaching about Jesus with nothing to support it. And I guess Jesus rising from the dead isn't magic. That's just science, y'all. Does anyone notice they never talk about the ascension? The Bible says Jesus ascended into heaven physically, bodily, and it was witnessed and all. But where did he go? Maybe it was aliens. Jesus loves the world. And Jesus wants everybody to be saved. But the first... If he does, can't he tell us this on his own? Why do we need stupid Matt Powell to yammer at us? But the first place that you have to go to in order to be saved... This is my understanding that there's a God, that you were designed, that God does love you. And you may say, Again, if this is true, why can't God provide this knowledge to us? Why do we need Matt Powell sitting in the woods looking stupid, misunderstanding science, and, well, pretty much everything to tell us this? Uh, and we're not making progress on our bingo card. I really missed some juicy squares. And you may say, I don't feel loved. I don't feel like there is a God. I don't feel this way. Well, you need to start putting your faith in the facts and not in a feeling that you have. You may 
LOL, did Ben Shapiro write this part? I always find this part rich. If you don't feel like God exists, you need to have faith. But all the people who feel like God exists, who just feel like God loves them, that's fine. All those people whose testimony runs along the narrative line of, I was a sinner who did all the sins until I went to a church service when I hit rock bottom and felt the Holy Spirit inside me and I wept for all my sinfulness and accepted Jesus. Were they looking for the facts? No, they were running on feelings. When Matt Slick went to an end times movie event and church service and started to believe, was he looking at facts? No. When William Lane Craig thought that if there was even the slightest chance that God might exist and love Bill Craig, it would be worth it, was he looking at facts? No. And I bet Matt Powell wasn't either. Anyway, Matt Powell doesn't give us any facts. It's just trust me bro vibes and the energy of dumb. You may look at the world and say, well, it's so dark. It's so horrible, the things that happen. Yes, I'm aware. I know. I live in this world as well. I've seen some horrible things. But you know what? If there is no God, horrible situations, horrible injustices will never be dealt with. But if so, no disputing that horrible things exist, but guess what? A lot of good things exist on this earth, too. There are people trying to help other people. And I thought we weren't supposed to worry about our feelings. Like, this is all, I feel things are wrong, and I want some ultimate judge making them right. That's wishful thinking at best, but really, I think we're trying to fulfill the feels in this one. But if there is a God, and in particular the God of the Bible, that means that justice will be served to every injustice, that God will make every single wrong right. Just want to point out that this section starts with if. If God exists. There is a rhetorical thing where you can see the result proving X must exist, so if this is, this must be true. But here we have no evidence, just wishful thinking. It is true there is a lot of injustice and a lot of unsatisfying dealing with injustice, but how is it right to deal with this in an afterlife? Why not do it here? Why is it okay to ruin this physical life with terrible things that are going to be rectified in a afterlife in a different sphere. I also have to question this system. According to some Christians, it is belief in Christ that gains you entry into heaven. Your acts don't mean crap. But even if your behavior gets you into hell, your sins, should you spend eternity in torture for finite crimes? How is that fair? How is that just? Also going to add good comes from God to our bingo card. It's not an exact match, but close enough. Right. And that gives me comfort at night when I lay my head on the pillow and go to bed. That gives and ta-da! There's Matt's reason for believing. He gets comfort. Is it Ray comfort that comes? Shudder. But seriously, I think this is the core of his belief. Matt was raised Christian. He feels comfort in this belief now. And then he goes and looks around and finds other, more rational things to pat out what is essentially an unexamined feeling. And we aren't supposed to use our feelings, please. That gives me comfort in the morning when I get up to know that Jesus is still on the throne. Je is Jesus in the bathroom? <laughs> but seriously, um, you believe that, not know it, and again, you are using your feelings because you get comfort. That's a feeling. Jesus is our only hope. God is our only hope. We need to put our faith in that fact. Not a fact. This is just preaching, my dude. And there can be other places to hope. I mean, we can improve our own lives, for one, and we can try to get the people around us to help us improve the world. So we, people, humans, we can do stuff. But now we can cover the you gotta have faith square. Fact. Either time, space, and nature was created, or it randomly poofed itself into existence. It's ridiculous to say that time, space, and nature can just pop into existence from nothing. I really need a square for needless repetition of whatever was already said. Matt, my man, maybe you've lost track, but you've said this, and we said you were wrong already. But if you go to different schools and different universities, they promote that as if it's a matter of fact. Well, they don't, because you don't understand the model that they're teaching. But way to scare your audience into mistrusting schools. Gonna add textbooks are wrong to our bingo card? Close enough, right? 
They promote a fantasy as if it's reality. But let me tell you, the reality is, the fact of the matter is, the truth is, that God created the world, and that's why I believe in God. I hope this video helps you, and I hope that if you don't believe in God, that you start believing in God, and that you learn about the Bible way to heaven, and how to know that you'll go to heaven when you die. There we are. Are we all convinced now? I, for one, am convinced that Matt Powell is an idiot. Well, frankly, I was convinced of that already. We didn't get that far in our bingo card, but I could say some items were hinted at. Atheism is the real religion, you know, the magic and mysticism shit. The biblical view, because we should all believe his preaching. Atheists are dumb, because they believe dumb things, right? They don't believe in God, and that's the thing that's rational. The Bible is science, you know, God created everything. The world created itself. He doesn't say it exactly. I mean, he talks about the universe, but, you know, the world, fine. It's a part of the universe. Science is a fairy tale. He doesn't say this, but I mean, I think that's what he means by magic and mysticism. And finally, why is there something rather than nothing? I mean, that's the main thrust of the whole video. It's all about looking around and because we exist, God, yeah. And he kind of implied our fallen nature by talking about everything being terrible, all of the awful things in the world. And he cast doubt on evolution by saying we are here because of God and are intelligently designed. But he doesn't actually mention evolution, but, you know, hints at it. At this point, I feel like responding to Matt Powell is not even low-hanging fruit, but the equivalent of video junk food. There is simply no there there, and it's so much repetition, so much of the same stuff. Doesn't mean I won't make another response video because he does have a following, inexplicably, like Ray Comfort and Ken Tovind and a bunch of other idiot grifters. And unfortunately, we do need other videos out here saying why everything they're saying is just wrong. Well, what struck you about Matt Powell, my low-hanging fruit, or junk food, or whatever you want to call this garbage we just responded to? Put it in the comments below. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, and do all the YouTube stuffing. You know we love it when you do the YouTube stuffing, and Algorithmo and his concert Algorithmo will reward you with great recommendations if you do the YouTube stuffing. And if you like what I do, you can buy me a coffee. That link is also in the description below. And I'll see you next time for something... Who knows what? It'll probably be stupid, though. Bye for now.